As always, I'm starting one minute late, but thank you all for being patient and waiting, and it's gonna be awesome. I've heard this talk by Praveen before on ES7, and you know what? It's better than ES6, it's newer, it's more exciting, and there are some cool features. So I'm gonna bring him in very soon, and we're gonna hear more about that. Before I do, let me know, how is the video? How is the audio? Is everything good, hopefully? And I hope you're just as excited as I am. Don't forget to put your questions in the chat below or to the side, uh, maybe that side, or that side, I can't remember. And yeah, put your questions in, your ideas, your suggestions. And although this is uh, Praveen's talk that um, he was gonna give a presentation on, we're gonna do this more as uh, not only a talk, but you will, we will be able to answer your questions as we go along and have those discussions. And it will be really interesting to see what kind of questions people raise. So without further ado, let me bring him in. So let's, uh, let's go. Right. Oh, bash my microphone, click of a button. Here should be Praveen. Praveen, welcome. Hey, how are you? How is everyone? Great to have you here. We're really excited about your ES7 presentation. So if you could maybe do an introduction about yourself, because you get involved in so many events, you you help out mentor at our Code Mortals events. I want to put a, a link in the uh, chat as well to that. Um, you mentor at those, you give talks, you do so many things. So just give yourself a shout out, let us know kind of what you do and uh, and why you do it. Awesome. See, the mo motivation behind it is like I learn a new, learn a lot of new things by doing all these things, and I also get to meet a lot of people. Unfortunately, due to this Corona breakdown and other things, well, we know that. All right. So this is uh, actually I prepared this whole uh, talk for it to be very interactive and have a live hands-on experience. Unfortunately, I couldn't see anyone here other than my computer. <laughs> and uh, so um, apart from that, yes, it is going to be live and hands-on. So um, yeah, so this is, these are some of the techniques, technologies that I work with. Um, I am, OK, something about me. So I'm a full stack JavaScript developer at the moment. I'm a, I started with like, a, you know, uh, I've got like about 10 years of experience in web development. I initially started with a LAMP stack and now I'm more into JavaScript stack using the Express.js, React.js, Node.js and whatever that is trending. So on the right side, you see the old me on the left side, you see the new me, something like that. All right. And now, um, other than these things, this is my day job. And with all these being said, I keep advocating about JavaScript and a lot of things related to JavaScript. Change is something which JavaScript takes in very seriously. So JavaScript keeps extremely changing a lot of things. And uh, to adapt with it, you need to be very much prepared. And uh, that's one thing which I wanted to do. So the best way to do it is by going into a practice like so so you get in and start working with it and then start practicing the new things so that way you will be like kind of not drowning inside so that's one thing uh yeah uh, uh, about me yes i'm a technical spe technology speaker or tech speaker as you can see uh this is my uh, i guess it's my third talk here and uh, yes i'm a stack overflow addict so you can see my stack overflow t-shirt and stuff then uh, uh with that being said, if you just go to Google and type in Stack Overflow Praveen, my link is the one which comes as the first, S-E-O-F-T-W. Um, I also have got, uh, I was an ex-MVP and now I'm a tech blogger and an author. Yes, I'm writing two books, each on uh, React Native and TypeScript. So to make myself better with those things. And I'm a cat lover. So that's about me. So uh, without any delay, let's go with what exactly the agenda is today. So the first thing which we need to see is who would be the perfect audience for this. Obviously, anyone who has a good amount of JavaScript knowledge will be perfect. Along with that, anyone who would like to like improve or uh, what do you call this? Be more lazy, but achieve a lot. So that would be the perfect audience. Yeah. Uh, the best example would be me and we will see who is tc39 and why we why that particular entity is important 
the next thing would be enabling your latest features the the latest and greatest features in javascript how could you like make it work and we will have a quick look at the overview of the new features and right out of that we will go jump into the demos that's that's what i have planned today so yeah while building this uh, design i really like to have this kind of thing so i thought of like yeah um, this is something which i said like 20 years ago work hard to get what you like or you'll be forced to like what you get but i don't think this is really true so maybe there should be a small change here it should be work smart to get what you like or you'll be forced to like what you get so that's what you need to actually do nowadays so be smart be lazy and start adapting to the ever um, never ending changes in the world so it it's it's mostly for everyone like in every single field so yeah so the perfect audience is going to be lazy developers like me who's happy to leverage the latest technologies adapt to extreme changes or in simple words if you already know and use javascript it's you okay let's see who is this tc39 i'm going to see show my uh, the, the other window here um so this is this is tc39 and uh, they are actually a group of uh, js developers from different companies who have uh, joined in together uh, to you know um, they are the ones who are the bible of javascript as a language so if you want something like uh, what exactly javascript is made of who makes it the specifications etc are all controlled and coordinated by the team in tc39 eddie are you still there <laughs> i am still here i'm still here and i was going to i didn't want to interrupt but i wanted to highlight a few points that you mentioned i think it was right. um I think it's really good. So you said this is your, I think your third time giving this talk and it is your uh, first no, no, type of talk. Third time in normal talks, but uh, this is the uh, second time I'm giving this talk. Okay, so that's that's awesome to hear. And at the end of this, I'm really keen to share your opinion and your experience on how it compares, a live stream compares to doing it in face-to-face uh, -face in, um, you know, at a, an event where you're actually there, like an offline event. So I'm really keen right. and passionate from this, not only to educate people in ES7, but also to show that people can share you know, their knowledge online and there are so many platforms to do it. And if anyone wants to, you know, needs help with that, just let me know. If anyone wants to do a talk on my on my stream as well, I'm more than happy to facilitate that. But yeah, enough from me. I'll let you get back to it. I've seen some comments, people like your slide. I need to give a shout oh, wow. out to Venkatesh, who's always on all my streams and I really appreciate his support. He always comes and says hi and helps out. And he helps me when I do Code Combat on my other channel, Code Mortals with Andrew. Awesome. Uh, Venkatesh always votes for me and always helps. So Venkatesh, thank you very much. Nice. <laughs> Thanks, Venkatesh. Okay, so uh, what exactly happens with TC39? That's what we are going to do. So TC39 is the uh, team or is the consortium, like how we have World Wide Web com W3C consortium um, that defines each and every aspect of a web application or like the, the web whole thing. So as similar to that not as big as the w3c tc39 is the team behind what javascript takes in and how it has been modeled so if you have any awesome idea to add to javascript well this is the way this is the process document tc39 follows uh, by the way tc is i guess it's technical committee 39 um i don't know what is tc38 or what if there is if there are other committees as well so yeah so tc39 is involved in javascript so the first thing is there is a there is a straw man um, area so let me really get the right one so um, i guess it should be here so if you want to contributing to the proposal here you can go with the list of proposals so the first thing they will be mainly looking for is if you can find existing issues and try to fix it or give a solution to it that would be the first thing they would like if you want to find something really awesome for example i came from the php background right so in php we have a lot of different uh, um what do you call this helper functions there is something like in underscore array and uh, kind of stuff like that and they all really help you in uh, um, 
making your uh, workflow in very simpler like all these things need to be al- um, available in a built in way from the language but unfortunately we don't have we still don't have anything very similar to in array except we have uh, array dot index of kind of thing so if you want to propose something new you need to start with a straw man kind of a proposal then the actual proposal happens so this is this is where you will be adding the case okay so this is going to be the uh, idea of mine and this is how the solution is looking like and this is what is going to uh, going to be achieved or something like that the next thing will be a draft step in this one you will be precisely describing the syntax and semantic uh, the main reason for this is this is a formal language so you will be putting like how it should be in the spec so like a formal spec um and the next level will be the candidate level this this draft will be reviewed by the team and then that will be actually completed like once your draft is accepted you will be like uh given some feedback okay these are the things that needs to be done this will this might take a lot of memory or something like that and due to that you might need to like kind of refactor a bit make the code more better like if you have used the for loop like why don't you use a map or something like that stuff like that uh and then finally if all the tests pass and this is accepted it's going to go into the finished stage where it's going to get included into the es standard ecma script standard at this point of time it is you as an author you have to provide all the polyfills for example the latest browser uh, which is going to use let's say um the async await kind of functions or big int which we will be discussing about these things later uh, it are all these things are not supported by say chrome 12 or uh, firefox 10 or internet explorer 7 yeah 6 is not a browser by the way <laughs> so if you want to give the support to the previous browsers you need to you will be the responsible person who who is the author of this spec to give a polyfill so polyfills are um a set of scripts like let's say what jquery does jquery just enhances the underlying javascript right it is very similar way polyfills will enhance the javascript so if you want to use the latest um libraries or latest features you might require the for polyfills and those polyfills will be avail- made available after this finished stage is done so that's about the stages of contributing to tc39 or the javascript as a language so action point for everybody if there's something in javascript that you don't like yes you can write a library there are some really good libraries out there that do um like there's like is it uh, low dash that has lots of awesome functionality low dash has a lot yes and that's awesome but it's not going to be as fast as if it's in the core um you know fundamentals of the language so um having a library is probably a starting point and if it gets popular let's try and bring those into the actual um core code base and yeah. then that way it would be a lot faster a lot more efficient mm-hmm. that that would be actually good uh, in the sense like uh, uh, what do you call um, new new ideas are always welcome from the tc39 team and uh, they are looking for other the best ways of optimizations mainly so i mean a lot of people are using javascript in their mobile devices and like the low powered processors so those kind of uh, areas are more um, they are looking for a lot of ideas in that case like in the area of optimization great so the next thing is uh, we will eddy are you still there i am still here <laughs> awesome you haven't okay. got rid of me I'm that quickly again no yeah problem. sometimes you go mute and uh, it's gonna it, it was sounding a bit weird so that's the reason all right so let's go with the new features today we will be looking at a couple of things in the way how you will be using the new features there are a lot of new items and strings numbers objects arrays functions error handling json and ajax not only these things but there are also other things like class components and symbols um even i am not sure exactly how they work but 
I just wanted to give a quick idea of what exactly is there in that. So uh, that's going to be the main thing. And we even before we want to go for the demo, I really want you all to experience that as well. So for that, uh, what you need to do is like there is a there is a quick guide for uh, by uh, Okta. Okta is a I guess it's a on demand video platform, I believe. OK, they have given a good way of how to try out the new ES2019 features today. Can so you, uh, the, sorry to interrupt, can you zoom in on on, uh, on that page to make it like it's the width? Yeah, that's better. Hopefully thank, that works. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So here you can actually try it out how these, um, if you want to try out the features, you can use this website as the, I mean, I'll, I'll give this link to Eddie to, uh, or else I'll just put this one in the chat, actually. That that would be a really a best way to do. Okay, so here's the link. And uh, yeah, so to, to use this one, it's easy to uh, use Node.js, the latest version of Node.js, to get all these options. So if you want to enable them for Mac OS or Linux, you should be using uh, the in-progress and... Uh, using the ha Harmony class fields and Harmony static fields if you want to use. For example, this is one particular feature uh, from uh, JavaScript that if you want to use them, you just need to add it as the options here. That's that's it. It's very simple. Or else you can also test it with Babel 7.0 and other things. So anyway, you can follow this document for that. And yeah, so we will be looking at these ways and um, these different features and then we will go let's jump directly into the demo so that we can easily understand how we can bring these things in okay demo so, yes hey demo it's it's demo time all right so i'm using a, a some kind of a device called uh, uh it's uh, it's what do you call this play code and uh, i'm just going to use only one just this page so that if i try to use something like let's say console.log. Okay, this has this live uh, update thing. I'm going to stop this. Hello, code mortals, or something <laughs> like that. And try it out running it. So it's going to show me this one. Okay. So yes, this editor works perfectly. So before, before going further, I just want to quickly have a look at if there is anyone who needs, I mean, like who needs answering some questions or something like that. Uh, I'm still monitoring the chat, so don't worry. If um, any uh, any questions come up, I will I will interrupt you and ask. People are asking for the link. I've just shared playcode.io. I, I just uh, shared the link which uh, I was talking about. Like, what happened to that thing? Like, oops. are you sure you're sharing it in the right chat? Nothing came through to me. Okay, you. Um, I just shared it here, but I couldn't find in the latest one. Did you check this out, Eddie? It's I, the developer.octa.com. Where did you share that it? Link. Oh, it hasn't come through in the chat. I don't know why. Yeah, that's weird. I'm just okay. going to share it again. Hopefully it comes through next time. So here's the link for enabling the new features. Looks like it's blocking. it's blocking the links. I mean, it would say if it was blocking it. It does say it's strange. Um, hmm. Yep, yep, it's blocking it. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm just gonna do developer dot octa space dot com. <laughs> yep. See, see, it's blocking it. It's still blocking it. Weird. Okay. It is blocking it. Okay. Do people need it now, or we can share it at the end? You give we me all the later. all the links, it's and not, I can put it in a comment. Right and I can pin it to the top of the, the I can pin it as a, as a comment at the top. Oh, here we go. It's, it's come right. through now. I can show it. It's come, one of them has come through. No, there you no, go. No, it's, it's the, it's the non-modified link. Like, you know, it's, it's a modified link. That's fine. All right. So playcode.io is just something like, a, uh, what do you, what do you call this? It's, it's a, immediately you will be getting the console output that's that's really cool about this one so i'm just going to put the console huge in the in a, in a bigger way and then uh, show it to you okay superb so let's start with one by one the first thing which i would like to display i mean like give a demo is about the strings so in strings 
we have these uh, so let's say we have a constant named uh, uh, my name and then let's give it as like my name obviously <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so this is this is fine so it's it's not going to affect anyone and it looks really good but what if i have some some spaces these are these are really a big problem when it comes to like HTMLs uh, getting the content of the particular div or something like that. Obviously, you would be doing a trim, right? So, um, if we try to do a console dot log and give my name here, obviously you could easily get the. Okay, it's not working with the thing. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I get. So I'm just gonna put a JSON dot stringify and then use my name inside that so that you can see what exactly happens here. So you could clearly see that there are like a bit of uh, space in and around, right? So what I would do is I would generally do my name dot trim. So but the problem with this trim is it's gonna trim both the sides of the. Uh, content or text but what if i want to trim only on the left or right so what we can do is there is a there are like two different uh, um, actually four different varieties of the trim right now so you can either just do trim left which is the, just going to trim the left side or you can do trim start it's just an alias of trim left and the same way how trim left and trim start works we can also do trim right and then trim end. So I, I knew it was end. end. Is... I knew it was end. When you said start <laughs> and left, I was like, right, it's going to be right and end. <laughs> so that's the first new thing. Like uh, you don't need to, uh, if you if you just need to trim one part of the site, you can use just trim start or trim end or the, um, and if you don't understand if it is left or right, then just go with trim left or trim right. It's for people like us. We just generally get confused whether it is going to be start on the left or start on the right. Uh, for particularly people with, um, you know, there are there are some languages where the direction is going to be right to left. So for them, the start will be on the right. So why do you need to confuse those things? Let's go with either trim left or trim right. As simple as that. So that's that would be a nice way to uh, you know um, work with it. So uh, I guess it should be some time for questions or something like that. Are there any questions related? To I this? actually have a question. And if anyone yes. watching does have a question, put it in, in the chat below. But I have a question, which is, so this is not available at the moment in ES6. This is only ES, ES7. Is that correct? I guess it's ES uh, 2019. So it is, it is available still more further. But obviously, your computer will be, I mean, like... Uh, almost all the latest versions of Chrome will have this. So for example, let's say uh, if I just use a small string and then put like this and put trim, obviously I've got trim left, trim, left, trim right, trim start on the alphabetical order. Okay, and what about on Node? How, what ver Do you know what version of Node this is available on? Currently, uh, currently uh, the latest version of Node is uh, Node 12. But it is always better to use the LTS versions. So if you just go for Node.js.org, I believe Node.js is a early adapter of all these things. So definitely they will be uh, having from the older versions as well. So whether or not you have an LTS version, it doesn't matter. So right now, the recommended versions are 12 and 13 with some LTS schedule having like Node.js 10. So Node.js 10, 12, 13, and 14 are currently active. Never ever use Node 11 because it's dead. And if you are using Node.js 10, Node 10, it's going to work. 11 is going to work. 12 is going to work. 13 is going to work. 14 is going to work. And make sure you don't. You should only use active LTS or maintenance LTS releases. Good advice. Definitely makes sense. You don't want to get stuck on a version that is Exactly. No then there active. will be a lot of like, you know... Um, whether this is working fine or like what's happening and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, if something doesn't work, uh, it's going to be mostly re uh, I mean, I, I did work with a couple of projects, open source projects. And the main thing which I found out was people were using node seven, node eight, etc. Node seven was completely not supported. Node six, it's still not supported. I guess node six is ba boron. That's the code name. And that was really popular. And most of 
most of developers will have node 6 installed right now and they are still happy with it it's always better to up- update to the latest and supported version even though 13.11 is current stable version it's okay to use 12.16 because it is going to be recommended for most of the users and also to add to that another piece of advice you i think it's really good advice to to use the the right versions and the active version not necessarily the latest version but at least the lts when your right. people are running their code on CI, you know, be it Travis mm-hmm. CI, Circle CI, or GitHub Actions, I recommend also trying to be proactive and run the the tests. If you don't have tests, at least run the build of the code, and uh, in a future version. So when you set up the CI, you can say run in version. 12 but also run in version 13 therefore if something breaks in a newer version that you're not using yet then at least you're aware of that breakage you might not necessarily fix it straight away because it's not a version you're on but when you come to upgrade at least you're aware of oh there are eight things i need to fix rather than you do it and you didn't don't know how many there are and it ends up being like 100 and it takes a lot longer to do the upgrade i think being proactive is is really important so definitely Sounds good. But this ES7 stuff is looking good. And one more thing which I would like to say is generally there are a lot of people who have started using Ghost as their blogging platform. Well, my current blog, which is in blog.brain.science, has a lot of new things on you know development and other things. So um, like, for example, what exactly Semver means, then Facebook uh, opening its own cryptocurrency, wildcard routing how do you do that and uh, stuff like that so for example i i post a lot on react js uh, based things example for example if you want to secure your react js application on these things so if you see this this particular application the the whole blog blog.praveen.science actually runs on ghost ghost is the uh, right now go to platform for uh, blogging and even now they are just slightly venturing into content management, which I would say they shouldn't go for it because they are so good at blogging and uh, for content management. So they should stay with, uh, you know, blogging alone, the blogs alone. And it's it's extremely fast. And uh, by the way, I'm not paid by Ghost guys. So it's just, uh, yeah, it's actually open source. So if you go to the developers and if you go for the installation and setup, you can actually do a fast track install. And uh, obviously it is also available from uh, GitHub. By the way, the main reason why I was talking about Ghost was I'm a huge Ghost user because all my blogs, the, the whole blog site is running on Ghost. So I really require a supported version of Ghost. So uh, Node.js running on it. So Ghost is powered by Node.js and um, obviously front end is fine. So the back end is powered by Node.js. So if someone is saying like, yeah, PHP is good or like, okay, no one says PHP is good. But if someone is says um, is saying like JavaScript is the best language for, uh, sorry, Java is the best language for banks uh, in the back end or .NET is great and Ruby on Rails is great. Yeah, they are great, but Node.js is also picking up and uh, they they are, I mean, Node.js is getting better in terms of like asynchronous IO and um, it's extremely good nowadays. So yeah, and uh, even Ghost, uh, which is running in production, recommends 10.x while the latest release is 12 even though it is lts they are looking for the older version so that's what i kind of tried to say so it's always not the latest version is the best or latest lts is the best there are some applications that you might require an older version of node.js or older version of software which is really stable so just make sure that when you are working with it get the right version here i think just to add to that again is um a lot of places that are running serverless so like serverless functions so aws or you know if it's lambda or firebase with its functions they are running an older version of javascript so be be wary of that that has caught me out before where it works locally on their emulators or whatever it is and then then you run it and Mm -hmm. it doesn't um and it doesn't work when you when you deploy it. So one thing that I haven't tried, but I've heard is really impressive, is the serverless in Microsoft. They actually, when locally, you can you don't run an emulator. You actually run the, the container that will be running the code in the cloud. And I think that's really okay. impressive. So locally, it's an exact match. If it works locally, it will work in the cloud. And I think that's really good. But I haven't tried it yet. It's Maybe I'll do a stream on it and uh, um, we'll, we'll pair yeah, on Yeah, we that. can try that as well. 
I'll I'll volunteer for it, or we can find someone from the comments section to volunteer for our next stream <laughs> as well. By the way, I just found a quick comment uh, by Marvin E A R P um, with Babel. Yes, Babel is a transpiler which is going to convert your ES two thousand nineteen or ES two thousand twenty. into a lower version es5 or es6 javascript which can be easily executed by browser so i am a react js developer i write code in jsx jsx uses a transpiler to convert its code into um the latest version but these things which i am trying to say are already built in in your latest version of browsers and the node js node js and chrome uses v8 javascript engine and uh, they all come with and it is in line with the uh, what e uh, tc39 proposals have so um if you have the i mean you should have the latest version of browsers and the development environment which is a must um uh, if you if you have it you already have these features that's what i would say now let's go for this integers so integers the maximum in uh, number which we can use is there is this thing called as integer dot so oh, number dot max safe integer that's the maximum num uh, maximum value a javascript can handle which is going to be this number and the problem with this is uh this number is a 32 bit in integer and it has maximum of so if if numbers go beyond this you might find out that the mathematics in uh, javascript is actually broken okay before doing even this i'll show you why mathematics in javascript is broken so <laughs> when you do a console.log of 1 plus 2 what do you expect to see it's going to be 3 right i'm just going to get into the comments before i reveal what i'm going to do now with decimal points i would really expect it's going to be 0.3 so guys and comments do you want to say what's going to what's going to be the answer for this oh like, i love this is guess putting it to the the test of the audience who's who's exactly. going to get it right i mean, i think it's point 3 as well so this is like i'm i on the edge of my seat and i'm a bit come stressed on, come on eddie add your comment as well as point 3 because i couldn't see any of the comments coming in oh yeah i guess i need to wait for a few minutes before this gets You do. It's, it, the comments are a bit slow coming through. So come on, let's name let's name out some people. Venkatesh, I know you're watching, and I know you know the answer okay. to this. So um, put a comment below. Who else have we got? Anyone watching? Put a comment below. Let me know. Just have a guess. Just put it in. You know, I've got it wrong. I think it's point three, which it clearly isn't. If Praveen's asking the question, so okay, Martin uh, says point one 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 one. Okay. Um, not exactly. Okay. Any more? We'll give them another ten seconds and just just stick yeah. a comment. I think people are trying to probably try it out and cheat. So no, Guys, no, no don't cheating. Don't try out. It's gonna be awesome. Like if you if you know what is gonna happen, please don't use the console to try it out. But if you know already the answer, just say yes, I know. It's gonna be yeah. one, one. No, it's, I, I guess it's gonna be point one three. It's not point one three either, but oh, actually. Okay. Pratibha got it uh, correct. That's so, so accurate. That and, that's so accurate with the, with the amount of decimal places that I'm sure they tried it in Either the in the process. Either she should be the best awesome JavaScript developer, or she should have her JavaScript console next to her. <laughs> oh, I was gonna. I said what point one three. I meant point one two. I was actually agreeing with Venkatesh. But I'm guessing ah, we're not that's right. That's awesome. So, so the the real answer, obviously, the cat has been let loose. So, the real answer is this. Wow. So, literally, it's not what we really think. So, we can clearly see that the floating point arithmetic in JavaScript is completely blo broken, and also, um, what do you call this? Oh my God, I totally forgot. Anything with numbers, and uh, numbers is really bad the reason behind this is an iso concept uh, which i will i'll try to find out <laughs> and send the links to everyone but yeah before that the problem here is um, javascript requires a lot of processing to do the numerical processing so what javascript has done in the initial days is so we had this uh, intel x86 processor 
those have this floating point limits and other things so javascript really wants to run on those less like intel 8086 processor is one of the uh, i i won't say that is the real processor javascript was running and this was tested but there is this uh, uh, i386 processor i believe uh, they had limits on processing power so to make 0.3 30000 and some number of zeros and four is not that bad value for this uh, calculation we are not going to do some kind of like so intrinsic calculations so to an extent this value is correct so they were okay with using less processing power to give you a decent value that's it so other than that if they try to get the 0.3 as the value javascript is going to take up the complete memory and processors processors power and it's going to screw up the processor in the olden days. So Marvin has put in a good comment and uh, talks about uh, Epsilon. And that's, uh, yeah, really interesting. I forgot about that. So that's really good to hear. That's why I love having these live streams because people that's, can share that's their nice. experience. That's, I haven't heard of anything like uh, an Epsilon constant. What what exactly that? Uh, sorry, you broke up, say that again. Um, sorry, uh, I haven't heard before. What exactly is this? epsilon constant about uh eddie if you know that do you want to have a tell about it like a bit quickly yeah i'm not very experienced in this i don't do any kind of crazy floating point numbers i usually work with um kind of fintechs where the numbers are okay. pretty kind of standard numbers uh, and no one really has too much money to have like loads of big numbers to worry about the max in <laughs> but if i remember it, it's something to do with the difference it's the the way the calculation is done, so you can do number dot epsilon, and it's a constant that you can use. I've probably explained that really badly. If anyone in the chat thinks they can do better, you know, who not thinks, who probably can do better, then please write in the comments, and I'll, I'll read it out. But it's something oh, yeah, to do. Yeah, there's something like that in JavaScript as well. Yeah, so yeah, number dot epsilon, and it gives you this this really tiny number, and then mm -hmm. I remember you can check against that, so you can check if your calculation is I think mm -hmm. less than that number and it returns a true or false or something. Uh, something to that effect. I can't remember it exactly. But I remember that is something that is possible to do and it, it makes it, um, yeah, just you could do various checks with it. So yeah, it's, it's maths that I can't do in my head either. <laughs> okay, but, but seriously, there are chances that we might be working with this kind of a number and we might need to you know uh, we'll just take this number as well okay and let's say we want to do a, a calculation with this number right okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a const a equal to this all right and I'm just gonna put a here and then run it okay that's good I got that number what if I do a plus one I got two that's great a plus three uh, or two maybe that's where our problem comes. JavaScript will not be able to handle a lot big numbers like, like this. For example, if you try to do that, it's going to give you crazy numbers. And to make it more crazier, and uh, in my... Uh, <laughs> make this thing die as well. Sorry, I shouldn't do it, but still, I'll, I'm, I'm just going to try to run like just 10 times to see what exactly the numbers are. So I'm just going to do console.log i plus a plus i. So this is rather interesting. <laughs> Did you see what happened? Did anyone expect it, it's going to do this? Is it because it's going to keep the numbers so big, it's going to keep truncating it. It's not going to allow it to like overflow. I believe so. I don't know what exactly happened just now. And yeah, so this is what actually happened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another plus I and then run this. Oh, oops. You could do some uh, ES6 there. No one in the comments wrote that. I beat them to it. You can do... Okay, so um, anyway, we, back, we, back we completed with... Yeah, we can use the back text thing. You don't have to. I was just saying it's just maybe it's not easier to read. <laughs> that would be nice, actually. I, I actually started with back text, but I thought, okay, let me just use this. So, I. 
is equal to not sure if this gives a different number but actually <laughs> every time when i run it it's giving me different answers look at this so with the string interpolation using template literals i'm getting this as the numbers but if i try to use it using the traditional string formatting i'm getting everything as 009911 which is oh very interesting actually i wasn't expecting it to be different between the two and we've got well, it um... has actually it has actually converted itself to okay still everything is plus 2 so that to to avoid these things the best way we can do is we need to use something called as big numbers so big int is the term here so if you want to do something like a big int what you can do is const b equal to new big I'm not sure if this big int is even workable oh wow that's awesome oh yeah it's it's working actually big int of a and then what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to do the same thing like let's get rid of this one console.log it's going to be b plus i but unfortunately you need to add a big int with another big int so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do b plus big int of i so this will be converting it into the one thing which you would the one thing which you would see is it's going to give you a n notation so if you see here it's going to be correct but the way it gets denoted as using an n so this is how you will be um sorry just a second i don't know what exactly is happening in the background there was some kind of a music coming in all right okay so if you want to denote a big int you will be using const a equal to the number the big number and write a n in the end that's all it requires to make it into a big int the other way is to do is using the constructor which is the big int of a that's another way to do it and the final thing is if you are adding a number with a normal number with a big int you might require to use this one even if you don't do that i believe it should work there you go you cannot use an identifier directly after a number so you get to see crazy things there oh wait not exactly that one let's try to do that a is not defined that's bad you're using well, a on the next it. line right there you go you get uncaught type error cannot mix begin and other types use explicit conversion so obviously we need to use a begin notation here and then put it inside that so that you get the right values nice and you can make all sorts of changes on the numbers really so on the big numbers a lot of lot of things to take in and absorb on the number side mm -hmm. and we've still got other topics to go which i think is really interesting so uh, can you go back to your slide and remind us of the other topics we have i'm just also conscious of time as well um right so uh, we have seen a few things on strings and numbers which are really important uh, important and it's i mean like the number one was really good okay let's let's crack on with objects and arrays which you have like a, a really a nice way of doing it so um yeah so first thing is regarding the objects we have uh, we have seen that uh, uh we could create objects from arrays do you know that so i'll just do a small object so let's say where youtube how live so this is just a simple object here and i'm just going to put this object on the console it's going to show me this way so there is no really a particular order how this where and how will be coming because they are just the properties so if you want to do something like convert this whole thing into an array either you should be doing some kind of a crazy interpolation or something like that but you can do something like object dot entries it is going to give you 
an iteratable list of these things. For example, okay, this is going to show me in a crazy way. So I'm just going to do a json.stringify. Um, row all these things, comma, null, comma, two. So this is going to give me like this. So you could see that this is converted into an array where the first one would be the key and the second one would be the value. So this is a way to create arrays. The best example or the best use case about this would be taking from a static database or data structure and then mapping it. Obviously, you cannot map in, map objects, right? But you can map arrays. At this point of time, you would be very much happy to use object.entries rather than using this one. So let's take this as the copy. If you want to convert this back into an array, what you can do is you can do like, now the const a is going to be an array. Instead of using entries, you can do from entries. So this is the other way of converting this object into an array. So, so array into an object. So this is the reversal. So this is something really cool, which I really wanted to uh, show this as a demo. And uh, obviously, this is this is the best thing um, when it comes to converting between different types of data. And if you want to traverse data in a multidimensional basis. OK, let's let's quickly look at the questions. Yeah, OK, we'll we'll, we'll just wait for. All right, so for the questions about the big int, it's going to be uh, uh, 64 bit and uh, the maximum uh, number is going to be. What should I say? Like it's 2 power 32 on the positive and 2 power 32 on the negative, which makes it 2 power 64 as the whole range of numbers. Um, right. Can, can we do anything... unsigned in JavaScript? I guess every integer is a signed integer in this case. It should be either positive or negative. So I'm not sure if there is. I guess there is unsigned integer. Um, maybe let's try number dot. They apparently, um, I'm having a look as well, just checking it out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's available but, or if it's proposed, but yeah, U in 64 or something like that. So U in 64 is there, and there is also this, uh, um, yeah, U in numbers are, but they are all in big int. They are all a part of big int, which is the new specification. Okay. Right. So uh, let's let's quickly go for the awesome thing. This is inside objects. Let's say we have something like an object which is uh, which is your uh, personal details. So let's say I have a name, and the name has a first name. This is going to be Praveen. Last name going to be Kumar, and then I would have something like H. Let me put it as 27 and then let's do a console.log. Oh, this is okay. I'm able to get my first name, last name, everything is fine. What if there is another object, like let's say it's going to be P and it doesn't have the name ca attribute itself, but the age is going to be, say, 15. And if I try to put P here, so far, all good. Everything is fine. If I try to put like o dot name dot first name, but give me the name as P Praveen. That's good. Awesome. What happens if I try to do P dot name dot first name for the comments, guys? Comment out comments, what's comments first. I like it. Gonna happen. I think you're gonna get undefined after a few moments. People write in the chat, what do you think is going to be? Undefined error? That's what I think. Undefined error? Are you sure, or Eddie? Uh, okay, because... Eddie, since we, we are also conscious about the time, let's talk between ourselves. So what do you think? Will will it be undefined? No. No, okay. Property doesn't exist, right? Because P exists, that's defined, but name mm -hmm. doesn't. So it's going to say... I trying to think, you know, using TypeScript, I got a bit lazy because it kind of exactly. IDE already makes lazy. 
but it it prevents issues though so it would already IDE would automatically oh. underline it and it would say something's wrong what don't I don't have to wait till runtime to find the answer so actually I'm really exactly bad at that's what, that's the main reason I say don't go for TypeScript but uh, it's about the people who enforce it <laughs> TypeScript is uh, if people watching my opinion TypeScript it is so much amazing and it reduces so many bugs because you don't have to wait till runtime to find out about them you can find out them during development. Sorry, Eddie, I, I'm not convinced. I'm still <laughs> going to go with this one. I'm, no I'm pretty much good. I don't want to bring the features of Java inside JavaScript. That's why I would like to stay inside JavaScript, not going anywhere in the type languages. All right. So you are almost correct. But the problem here is you might get into um, undefined is not a right answer. Uh, it's going to be a type error because you are trying to access a property of something that is not existing. So if you run this, it's going to be an uncaught type error, which says it cannot prop read a property first name of undefined. Until this name is completely fine. If it is not there, that's fine. Awesome. Great. This is okay. But I, w I was thinking it would do name first, not the th the end of the chain. I think it would do the beginning of the so chain. So it starts with so, the okay. left to right here in this case. Okay. So to, to avoid this, what we can do is we can do something called as optional chaining. So we need obviously this guy. Okay, so I'm just gonna put put the first name here. Okay, so if I'm doing this way, it's gonna give me undefined without any errors. That's what is gonna happen. If not, I'm just gonna put O and run it. It's gonna give my name. That's as simple as that. Previously, what we will be doing is if I if I just do this and get myself into an undefined error, uh, it's gonna be type error, right? So what I generally before ES6 I do is I do something like this. So this is going to check whether the P exists, then P dot name exists, and then P dot name dot first name exists. Ah, so that's awful. But yes, you're right. ES7 solves this. And for the record, TypeScript, TypeScript also has, has it already. Babel also has it. So instead, if I'm a TypeScript hater, I'll just go with Babel, right? So that's easier for me. So this works out pretty well with the right one. At the same time, even if this is not there, it's going to work out for me as well. Okay, I'm just going to quickly look into the... Exactly, it's going to be a type error, guys. Okay, so yes, so that's what is going to happen here. In this case, what we can do in a different ways, instead of doing all these things, I'm going to use an optional chaining, which is going to give me this way. All right, so that would be awesome. And one more thing is the defaultness, okay, which is called as... So, so first thing, let me quickly tell, this is called optional chaining. All right. And another thing is, let's say I've got an age. For example, there could be some places this age might not be defined. So I'm going to do a console.log. Your age is, and then I'm going to give p.age, right? Looks good. Okay. There is another person who is very conscious about their age they don't want to give the age at all okay so at that point of time if i do a q.age ah i don't want people to see something like null inside the thing what is the quick way of doing this easy we'll use something like another ampersand ampersand or there we were using ampersand ampersand operator here we will be using an or operator and then we will give by default the age is going to be 25 and now if you're going inside that your age is 15 your age is 25 that's good right but there is a big flaw here all right there comes a kind of like a, a perverted person who is going to put the age as zero let's see what is happening here now let's do an r so just keep in mind we have three people p q r p gives the correct age as 15 q is gonna be like i'm not gonna say my age r being a pervert he's gonna give a age of zero let's see what's gonna happen here well that's not the right thing. Okay, let's not consider R as a pervert. He's a newborn baby. Even that is possible. But isn't this a wrong thing? Like, 
I'm trying to look into a person whose age is valid and zero, and their age is getting in a wrong default age. So our operator, which is going to be this one, the OR operator is going to check for all the falsy values, and it's going to do this way. Previously, what we would be doing, we will be just doing something like ternary, right? It's what we used to do previously. It's a ternary operator. Venkatesh yeah. mentioned it in the chat. Yes, but this is huge, right? Ah, we need to check if type of age equal to equal to not equal to. Uh, I'm hoping you've got a much blah, better solution. Blah, 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 and then you get this thing. Perfect. Yes. Oh, no undefined or okay there are some issues with this as well sorry this is not the right condition in that case and and <laughs> you're making it worse where is the where is the magic the es7 magic it's coming okay let's see first thing if we have the es6 works okay fine this is what i wanted but unfortunately this is not the huge amount of code that i want to write okay let me quickly see the comments Yes, Venkatesh. Unfortunately, ternary operators won't work in this case as well. So, uh, yeah, it might work, but it's going to be very hell, like, you know. Um, all right. Pratibha has the answer again. There is something called as null coalescing operator, which is technically derived from um, MySQL, maybe. MySQL and most of the database places. You could try to, you could really find out uh, an operator which is going to be a null call sync operator. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep this as a copy and then I'm just to to see how these two things are different, like to see the size of this changing. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing all these things, I'm just going to do a double question mark and then running it. I'm getting the correct answer. This one, guys, it's a null call sync operator. So null I'm just going to copy it from Pratibha's answer because I'm not good with English. Yeah, that's a really yeah, hard word to spell, though. I can't even pronounce it, so I, you know, no respect way. for you to doing it. That's like who makes up words like that? That's obviously made up by someone. Actually, that's crazy. a good idea. We can ask Pratibha who gave the answer. Oh, Pratibha, can you answer who actually made this null? The name Kohli Singh. Uh, how do you even pronounce it? Yeah, I, I have let's, no let's idea. Let's wait for the comments until it comes up. All right, so we got we got this one. So um, it's going to be a null Kohli Singh operator or whatever you call that, and however you pronounce it. So that is really helpful in giving you like a you know falsy answers. For example, let's say um, age 27 is there. That's good, and then we will give another value which is going to be a boolean value what do you think um let's say in uk something like that and uh, for those people who are in uk let's say uh this one this guy is screw definitely it's me i'm here uh this person who is just 15 years of age definitely he won't be able to go out of india or anywhere else maybe so let's say another true here and finally another true here okay so we can actually look with this one with the same kind of a technique like using the ternary operators or something and we can just make a canceling these things so what i would do is i'm just going to put as you're in uk and then here I'm just going to put e dot in UK, then um, it's going to be a ternary, right? Else not. So this is going to happen for PQ R O. <laughs> not one three. <laughs> happens uh we did have four thing right okay this pravina maybe oh. remove the the commented ones out because otherwise you're jumping up and down and very fast people can't can't see what's happening okay 
Maybe so so I've just can... got these things. So for for now, I've got in UK as true, false, true, true. All right. So I I got to this place, and let's run it. Uh, is this right? That seems like it is right. So the second one is not in the UK. Is that correct? If you remove, delete the commented out lines so we can we can see everything in one page, maybe. Right. I'll just get rid of these things, uh, or else I'll bring this whole stuff on the top. Okay. So we've got this here. So okay, this actually happens when people have not given the property. So R, we don't know where exactly the R is. So look at this. R could be in UK, could not be in UK, but it's it, it's gonna say like by default we will say like it's not in UK. And okay, well I don't know how this is gonna be expected, but for even for this one, if we try to use um, like a like the operator that we have here, we could use this way. Oh my god. <laughs> That's not what exactly what I wanted here, but it's gonna say true, 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 false, true and not. Not. <laughs> Alright, this this completely blown up the application, but yeah, I don't think this is um so if you are trying to give a default value then this works out. So I haven't given any of the default values so that um R may or may not be in the UK. So, but if this is going to be false, uh, we need to do it in a different way. So, even for false, it is not going to give me the right answer. So, I mean, like, I'm just going to scrap this whole thing up because it's not working. Or maybe I'm not in the position to give the right way of showing it. All right. So, uh, other than this, you can also get the optional chaining in such a way that let's let's slightly look into the optional chaining. So, we were, we were using... Um, things like this right so the other part in optional chaining is if you want to use any of these um, types like for example if you want to use a static axis so this is static axis you know that this property exists and you are doing it something like this let's say you have the first name or like const uh, last name is going to be last name and if you want to access it dynamically I'm just going to put ln here instead of that if you want to access that what you can do is you can use ln here like this way so that this gets translated into last name in case let's say we have a say hello as a function and it's going to say hello world in this case what we can do is we can even do the same thing like this dot say hello but with this way um right so it all gives me undefined for the constant p but if i try to use it for o it's going to give me the right answers say hello is not a function that's nice I did have say hello here. Uh, that seems to be a function, right? It's it's actually a function, right? <laughs> yeah, it looks okay. I wasn't paying attention, sir. I was looking at my phone. <laughs> oh my god, that's so bad. Okay, I'm just gonna try doing this one by using a class kind of thing. Hey, but it shows that we're all code mortals, right? It just shows that you know, even though we've done this for years and this is a new mm -hmm. feature, that we still make mistakes, so it's fine. Um, don't you need to put um, oh, don't I know usage, what exactly open, close brackets? I made. Yeah. So this is actually right, but it is in the, you know, it's in the root. It's not inside name. Oh, yes. Bad. That's me. So there you go. No, it's not you. That We're pair work. programming with 12 other people <laughs> online. We all missed it. It's fine. It happens to the best <laughs> of us. That's right. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, 
<laughs> that's awesome that's awesome thanks pooja and pratibha all right okay so this way if you replace this with um, let's say oh not not exactly this one let's say we replace this with p it's going to give me undefined undefined and it's not a function so obviously it needs to be a function since undefined is not a function it's going to give a type error nevertheless it's going to be undefined right so this is this is one good way of uh, using the nullish co co coalescing operator so that's actually really good and uh, let's go to the arrays part uh, before that eddy do you have any questions then we will go with the questions from the comments no i'm i'm good for the moment um you you carry on just be conscious of time and um, we probably got about 45 minutes maximum left so i know you've got some okay. other topics you want to cover as well definitely definitely we can we can we can finish it off before that all right so next one is going to be arrays which is going to be really interesting so the first thing which we will be looking at arrays are for multi dimensional arrays okay uh now let's say i've got an array which says which is like this it has one dimension and the next dimension will have like uh, it's going to be literally a matrix let's say 1 2 3 and then on the first row then we have 4 5 6 on the second row and finally 7 8 9 on the third row all right and if you try to do a console.log arr obviously it's going to give you a flat uh, like like this array okay fine Let's do a stringify again. Uh, this is bad. Or, or you can actually, instead of using console log, you can use console dir, dir. I'm not sure that actually works here. And then remove that. And then um, afterwards, you can put comma, create an object. Like in the, is a second parameter in dir. And then do uh, a depth colon null. So the property in depth with the value null, and it should give you everything. Nothing. What? There you go. Sorry, AD. No, that works. Come on, people in the chat, help me out here. Really? I used DAR, which is perfect, and it's good. See, AD, you need to. Be, I used this recently. You need to be uh, aware of that we are using a browser based console here, so it doesn't work. Uh, I was doing it on Node. So that works on console, but not here. Uh, okay, interesting. Okay, so here we can clearly see that it's going to be... Okay, I'm just going to get rid of these things. But look at this. It's actually having multiple children and stuff like that. Let's try to give grandchildren for 6. So let's say 6A. Oh, you can do a 6A, right? 66, 67, or something like that. And then you get something like this so crazy, right? It's it's really tough to, uh, or else we can put these five and six inside a, so, um, inside the grandchildren and uh, we'll do that way uh, so that it is at least a bit clear. Okay, so now I need all these things into a flat array. The best way to do is, there is a function called flat, which is new. And then if you run that, it's going to do one. So this is the depth that you're going to, so this is cool. Like you get it converted immediately with a single level and let's say if i do two here it's going to convert this as well and if what if i give a multiple number of values let's say 100 uh, which looks fine so it doesn't make any problem so in case if you don't know how how deep deep this array might go you can just put infinity that's a brute force attack and then <laughs> it's going to give you that complete flat array and uh, that's actually a good way of doing it I was and thinking to use number dot the safe big into whatever it was. Safe max uh, integer. Yeah, yeah that, that but works as well. So in, infinity is much max. nicer though. I like that. Infinity is much smaller. So that's actually easier to, you know, make that instead. And there is also other ways to do. Instead of doing this array dot flat, flatting, flattening the array, and then mapping through it, you can also do a flat map. So... Because also Praveen, uh, not Praveen, um, Venkatesh has mentioned flatten and flat, flatten deep. I don't know those ones. You've got a flat oh, map I, I as have, well. Okay. 
cut and deep. See, we're all still learning. I oh, love it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Subab, this is a Lodash function. Ah, Lodash. Venkatesh, that's cheating. Venkatesh, yes, you are awesome. <laughs> you are getting everything from Lodash. But yes, we, we are getting it from JavaScript itself. It will be we faster. We are powerful than Lodash now. <laughs> yeah, we're doing, using Lodash is great, but it will be so slow. Whereas doing exactly. it, if you can use you the core JavaScript functionality, it will be much faster. Okay, that's interesting. So, <laughs> if you can also do a flat map, but here, I don't think it is actually working. So, maybe if I do the uh, flat dot map infinity, it, it, does that work? Yeah, this is working, but for some reason, flat map here doesn't work. Maybe is it flat map? No, it's not a function. So, I'm just doing the flat map. And it's no. throwing me null, which is weird. <laughs> I'm just going to give A here again. Interesting. So what if I put A plus 1, something like that. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so the problem here with flat map is it's getting only the second level as a string, which is, again, interesting. So... Yeah, so you can use flat map for flattening out and uh, getting the values as well. So that's that's one way of using it. Uh, this is about the flat flat and flat map. There is also this one. So apart from this, let me have a okay. Yeah, true vintage, but yeah, I'm not using Lodash or external uh, libraries. Don't want to bloat it. You don't need to write it. You can just say it out to him. He can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's true. Yeah, Lodash works in uh, the past. Now, Lodash features are bringing, I mean, like we are stealing all the features from Lodash and adding it to the JavaScript, like the core JavaScript. So that's that's awesome. So the next thing which we will be looking at is uh, about sorting in array. So uh, I really need to get, a, get the example for... Uh, yeah. So previously, when we are using um, sorting in array, we used to use quick sort. So uh, the quick sort is now being replaced by tim sort. So tim sort is really good. Like, uh, uh, let me get the right example for this. Tim sort JavaScript example. Okay, so uh, there was this particular nice uh, example here. I'm just trying to find that. Okay, so so there is this v8.dev. You can use this um, this one for the underlying implementation. But I'm just gonna try to get the right uh, sorting thing. Uh, so it was actually given in given by a person called Silver Ganesh ninety three on Medium. Uh, not exactly this one. So here we go. So the stability of uh, array dot sort is being it's it's better now. So this is this is the link for that. I'll just uh, send it to the chat somehow because it's gonna screw up. It's not gonna allow me to add links. Right. So for example, if we have something like this, and if you try to sort it based on the rating, you don't need to think about the way the name is being sorted because it will be taking care of the sorting of names in the original order. So that's what is the new feature in terms of sorting, which is kind of crucial in some um, data heavy subjects where you try to do multiple sort. So first you want to sort by name and then you want to sort by rating. In that kind of cases, this is going to be really helpful. So we are using Tim sort now instead of quick sort. And uh, this algorithm is more powerful more faster and then 
the stability also remains good so that's something about uh, the sort stability and apart from this we can actually go for the next one so about functions how are we in the time you've got about just over 30 minutes correct so functions let's say we've got something like uh, const um okay i'm just going to do two functions function a which has um this is going to say a and then i'm just going to do console dot log a so this is the original function signature if i do something like console dot log a and then see what's going to happen here you could clearly see that we are also adding the comments the only thing that's missing from here is the spaces and if i try to do to string here it's going to give me the same thing uh the main thing the the main difference between this and the previous version is the current version gives you something like this whereas the previously it's going to do this without spaces and comments no comments will be displayed here so it's going to be like this so this is really helpful in terms like say for example uh, you want to make sure this particular function has not been tampered or something like that then you are going to check with the whole signature itself like for example you can do something like uh, copy the whole thing here and put it here so i use some um Yeah, or you could also do rather than copying and pasting the entire thing, you could do a hash of what you expect. So therefore, it something would be something like that. Yeah, even that works. So what what's going to happen here is let let's say if I try to do another function to modify this function by putting like the same thing, it's it's all good. But I'm just going to add something like uh, send whatever the user writes to the to my server. something like that so this is the hacked a and the first thing is obviously here in this case it's going to say identifier a has already been declared so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it as let a equal to this and it's going to do something like this is everyone still watching are you still with us we hopefully haven't lost you there are a lot of features to take in but they're pretty pretty cool and so yeah any questions don't forget to write in the chat and i see we've got like 16 thumbs up on the videos so thank you so much that i really Thanks. appreciate that this is going to do something like this and it's going to give me false so this place the function has been you know um what do you call this id is it uh, it's it's been compromised or it's been uh, disconnected or something like that there what is a call, word what? and i can't think of it it the integrity <laughs> the integrity is lost the integrity is gone it's yeah. been compromised it's been malformed um it's been hacked guys someone in the comment section please add that <laughs> so yeah so here it also helps in making sure that integrity of the function looks good and if we try to do a dot to string again now it's going to give us with the latest uh, you know how how this a is been changed so let's see how it looks now obviously yeah it's going to be in a different way so in case if i'm not doing this one it would be obviously the same so right i need to also change this one so yeah it's 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 good but in case of this the the whole thing is kind of sabotaged so there we go nice okay so what's next i'm conscious of time i want to keep chasing you <laughs> the next one would be like uh, error handling where let's you do don't it. need to use the catch oh yes let's do this sounds interesting let even okay. well, they all sounds interesting but yes. this sounds also super interesting uh 
now when whenever we try to do the same kind of like you know um, console dot log a dot hello obviously a is not there so obviously it's going to give me an a reference error so if i do a try the first thing i require to do is a catch right yeah I should be having some sound effects. Our next stream, I have some sound effects, so I can have some ta-da when it blows up and breaks next time. Right. So here, you don't need to give any parameters here. So generally, you need to give a catch of exception or something like that, and then you can just do like cons um, console dot log. Whoops. And then we can also do console for those souls who would be really looking to do this. You can do something like get message or something like that. And oh, it's it's not this one. While you're while you're doing that, I'm just going to answer um, uh, Shivan. Hopefully, I pronounce your name right. Uh, question about. Um, Put in the comments after the function names. Can you be more precise as how they can be more helpful? Because double forward slash would be would be uh, enough for the same. You're right. So the double forward slash putting it before the function is is useful for just commenting the function and commenting your code. It's not a part of the function really. But yeah, exactly. It's not part of it. So by putting it after the function name before the bracket or inside, it's part of that function. So when you console log it the console log the function, not the data, then you actually get the comment included in that. And Praveen's example was it helps with security. I, I I don't think that's something I would use, but it's an interesting feature that they've included it. I'm sure as it becomes more used, people will get more creative in the way that, you know, they can use it and benefit from it. From it. So I wouldn't probably worry too much about it for the moment. I think something like with the um, try catch is something I'll probably use on a more day-to-day -day basis. I mean, even the, the whole big int and the numbers calculation, again, that's not something that we probably do as web developers on a day-to-day -day basis. Whereas the try catch is why I'm really interested in this is because I think that is something, you know, we call a third-party library, not library, a third-party HTTP, you know, API, sorry, third-party, third time lucky, third-party API with a HTTP request and we will wrap that in a try catch, right? Because it could break for 101 reasons. So this is why this one's more interesting for me. But if anyone has any interesting use cases for anything we've used in the past or earlier in the stream, put it in the comment. It'd be interesting to, to see it. Praveen, so, yeah, back so to you, sorry. Previously, we were using this E here, which is no more required. We can just use just a catch and then even with an empty thing, so that's that's kind of like easy, right? So okay, if something is not working, yeah, it doesn't work. That's it. No no errors thrown. And console log and let's say let's do get back to work or and we can also do something like uh, if irrespective of it, okay, something screwed up. So something screwed up and I'm not caring about that. Okay, so it's 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 gonna work this way. So or else if that's the case, we can also do a dot hello like a it's going to be undefined or like even that's not working so without if you are doing nothing it's just going to say get back to work so uh, you really don't need to like put which kind of an um, it's it's optional now so something like that that's what i meant so but definitely this is not optional so you need to have this catch here and uh, yeah so you can completely avoid the whole body and uh, every, uh, the parameters and then just get back to work that's the new feature about the catch and apart from these things we have uh, a json's uh, um you know we we tend to use emojis right um so that's that's about the try catch thing so now there is some advantage uh, advancement in json in json we have got this json.stringify which we have been using a lot now if I try to use an emoji here, something like a cat emoji, or maybe I'm going to use something like uh, one, the one with the skin tone operator. So this is going to give you, um, oops, I forgot to add the console.logs. Do you, um, to get the the, the, the the images, how have you done that in your IDE? Do you have a plugin for that? Oh, no, you're in the browser. 
Okay. I'm in the browser. Okay, yes. So here, if even if you do a stringify here, it's going to show me correctly this one. Previously, what it will be showing is, it's going to give me the size of these things. Like, for example, if I do a link here, um, technically, this is not just one character. So the, the character of this is like uh, leaving the double quotations. It's going to be two characters, and this is going to be four characters. For example, to make it things more clearer, I'm just going to get rid of this whole thing and then give the length for these things. So it's going to be two characters and this is going to have four characters. And if I just say Y or something like that, it's going to be one character. So when you say that this particular thing has the color modifier and everything, but json.stringify shows you exactly the perfect emoji. But previously, it was going to show you like percentage FC, percentage FD, percentage EF, percentage EE, <laughs> something like that. So that's been fixed in J the recent uh, versions of JSON. And uh, that's one awesome thing for uh, maybe type checking or maybe even converting the content into a DOM element or something like that. This ex um, technically helps in like, you know, uh, using it with React, not converting it back to the original way, but doing it in the right way. So something like that. Then finally, we will go with the Ajax calls. Is this, the, is this the, I was going to say, is this the um, last topic? Ajax calls is going to be the last but one topic. And then we will be talking a bit about the dynamic imports. And I'm just going to give a small slide, which I found, I mean, which um, a, a link recently I found, which is really good for the new features where it shows about a lot of things about dynamic imports. Uh, new okay, there are two things more. Two, two things more, and then we'll hopefully have some time for even more kind of Q&A. Questions. Um, yeah, questions if will if be you nice. have questions, ask as you go along. Um, we are happily, you know, pause and, and answer those. Uh, but we'll also have hopefully time at the end uh, for questions as well. So Ajax we can actually, and then imports. We can actually, uh, uh, you know, break off at uh, in 15 minutes. That would be perfect for people who want to leave. Sure, no problem. So we're aiming for about 15 minutes. So, uh, but right. people watching now, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button to get notified for future videos. <laughs> Hopefully you're enjoying this. So let's keep going. Right, Ajax and then imports. Ajax calls. Okay, let's see about the old method, what we generally do, okay? So we would be using some kind of an exec char and uh, stuff like that. For it's, it's not just Ajax calls, but sorry, it's asynchronous methods synchronous methods so old method is going to be like uh, let's say we get users or something like that and then uh, get user let's say uh, username is going to be Praveen signs or something like that and then we don't need a console right now so it's it's going to be just normal text um, Praveen signs and then after I get the whole thing here uh, I say let's say I get some kind of a response and uh, based on the response, I do something like console.log and then give the res or something like that. So this is this is the old method uh, using callbacks. The problem with this one is it's going to be, it's going to get into a callback hell. Okay, right. I got this thing. Okay. So I need some kind of like get property or something like that. And then I do what I do is I'm going to do the res dot. Um, let's say repos. And then I'm just going to go into a function and then that's going to be repos. And then I've got the repos here. So we could clearly see that this is going to get into a callback hell pretty soon. And uh, I'm just going to put the first repo here, res.repo. Oh, no, it's going to be repos dot uh, repos of zero dot ID. And then based on the function, just gonna get the ah this callback oh. hell. I haven't seen it in years. It's scaring me. You're gonna give me nightmares. Yep. This is what I need to go for. Okay, so console.log. This is gonna get me the first repositories URL. So that's that's exactly what I wanted to go for. And unfortunately, yes, this goes into a callback hell. And why callback hells are bad? If someone is gonna read through your uh, stuff, it's gonna like okay, where exactly the um, so here at this point of time, it's going to go with the get user and then let it's going to go with next. So 
the the way it works is first it hits the get user then immediately it hits the next not these things then after a while when get user resolves then goes with the get property and then it gonna stay the same way and then after a few minutes when the get property resolves it's gonna go for the get repo and then we don't know when it gets resolved and then when it gets resolved it's gonna go for the repo url and you get the repo url and obviously you can't get the repo url here so it's it's gonna be undefined always it, at this point but what people have done now was to put this repo url equal to inside this so that they are able to use it and then whole program the rest of the program will be inside the um, you know repo uh, inside this particular function so rest of the program which is kind of like you know uh, it's going to go crazy uh, i don't want to keep keep on going into a small function to put all these things and now let's say if i have another variable declared here uh, declared variable i cannot i won't be able to access it somewhere outside here so that's another problem i don't have scope of accessing value of and the way people used to get around that was then declare the variable in a higher scope so therefore it is so more it available work. And it's no, you could you could declare it in the in the the scope above, right? Yeah, I can do it like this. So something Wait, like. But it's uh, awful, say, right? It gets into like globals no, and naming. No, the and... problem is it won't work. That's the problem. So let's say I do a declaration of the variable here, and then I update the declared variable into repo dot url. Still, it's gonna be de here the value value of declare. Oh, underneath it will won't be there because yes, you're right. It it won't be available. It's gonna because, be this one. Yeah, of course, because it's gonna run asynchronously. It's gonna run asynchronously. At least to solve the callback hell, what new, uh, what people did right now is to use the chain chainable functions. So now comes the promises, and what happens here is, you do this, and then you stop it here, and then you do a then. And then still it is kind of a callback, right? It is definitely a callback again. But it's more it's more linear rather than kind of going deeper in. Exactly. It's more of, of a chain. So it was a, an improvement. And then I'm sh and then you're right. You're going to show us the next improvement. And then I'm going to mention RxJS at, at the end. Oh my God. Okay, you have something else. <laughs> All right. So we've we've got we've got to the position like to this level. It's gonna be a bit okayish at this point, but still, it's not that good because it's gonna go again into so huge stuff, and uh, well, even this is this doesn't work either, right? So you put a then, 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 and this this again internally, it's gonna be a callback hell as well, right? Well, we don't need something like this. That's the problem. So what what we generally do for these kind of things is this is the other better method but not the best method. The best method comes here. The best method is gonna be using asynchronous function, async and await. The same thing which we tried using this with the declaring variable is now possible. So instead of using a uh, thing like this we are going to do we are completely going to get rid get rid of this one so it's going to be var res equal to await till this function gets resolved and then you're going to you're going to do var repos until this is going to get resolved then we can get rid of all these things from the inside function And then finally, we could get var repo URL is going to be wait again at the repo URL and so the declaration will definitely have this thing. So this is more readable than anything else that's that's what's the main goal of using async and await so comparing this with the original one it's gonna be like crazy right 
It's true. It is. It is more linear. It's easier to follow. You're reading more one line at a time rather than trying mm-hmm. to go horizontally as well as vertically. Or vertically, or in the depth of whatever. It does make more sense. And then the async await is is awesome. I do. I mean, I do have a love hate relationship with uh, RxJS. So those people who use Angular will be much more familiar probably with RxJS. You can use it with other stuff. RxJS is its own library, but Angular really um, uses, you know, utilizes that. And you can do mm-hmm. um, a lot of observables, and you subscribe, and it, it's quite nice. But I do have a love-hate relationship with it. I do love it when it works, okay. and when it's difficult and a pain, I do hate it. So, uh, yeah, well, right. that's the discussion for another time. Right, that would be great. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the last thing which I wanted to show in Ajax calls, like, like sorry, asynchronous calls. And uh, yes, then there is also this uh, history and future of asynchronous JavaScript. So that's that's a good read which we can do. I'll send you the links later. And finally, there are other beautiful mentions about like classes, how private variables are declared and there is some uh, description about symbols. So symbols, they can add a new property called description, which is really good in terms of uh, using the name for the description and stuff like that. And uh, finally, the one which really I like was the dynamic imports. So Let's do ES2019 or something like that. So um, <laughs> I thought you were going to say ES21. I was like, wait a second, we're doing ES7. ES8 <laughs> will be next time. That's true, that's true. So generally, we generally use something like import from get module name and something like that. And if we try to use inside an if condition, obviously, it's not going to be allowed. It's going to like uh, say it's going to be a, a type error or something like that. Anything, this, this particular import keyword, you cannot block level import kind of thing you cannot um you know like put it inside a block level which is gonna screw up the whole program so the import expression needs to be like you know we should be uh doing it in a such a way that it has to be dynamic so what we can do is either you can use an await keyword here or the dynamic import is gonna be using the await import in this way so there is also another way to import this one by using a, a loading thing. Can, so using sorry, like, Praveen, to interrupt. Can you can you zoom in? Oh yes, sure. Okay, the first one which I was telling it using the, uh, oops, not this one. Uh, this doesn't get inside. Okay, so we can just if you if you try to import it using this way, it's uh, it's gonna inside a block level expression. It is gonna throw an error. So you cannot put in import keywords inside any of these blocks. So that's why we should be using this import expression, which is the new one. We can use it dynamically here. So for example, if you want to get the module path and you get it from the user, you are putting it inside the import keyword and then using a asynchronous then and catch kind of a thing. Now you can also use an await keyword to import it. So this really helps you to like use it as a expression rather than a keyword here it is going to be an expression not ex- not a keyword here so import is going to be a normal function which is an asynchronous function which is going to import some kind of a file system and then you're going to await it until this can get imported obviously you can contain let keywords inside a block right so in that way you can even do something like let's say you have a load function you're going to put inside this say uh, and await import inside the load function, which is perfectly fine. So that's that's what is the new way of importing the, uh, di- this is called as a dynamic imports. Other than this, there is a super cool thing which we are gonna use, numeric separators. How does this number look like? Like for example, const a, is equal to 10 i don't know how many numbers okay, so are you're going here. to I the don't... next topic before you go on to the next topic i was going to say so imports does anyone have any any questions i know we're we're conscious of time we've only got for you know five ten minutes left so we're quite conscious to, to cram in as much information as we can but if you do have any questions i'm trying to answer in the chat and we can discuss and answer in the video if that helps um tajez 
I hope I pronounced that correctly. I asked what language to learn. I mean, JavaScript, I've done JavaScript for so many years. I'm talking over 10 years, but I hated it for so many years. And <laughs> uh, I preferred PHP for like, when I, which I started 15 years ago, PHP and Java. Oh my God, but, you are like me, Eddie. Uh, exactly. But in the last kind of six years, I realized that you have to fall in love with JavaScript because it is everywhere. <laughs> Not only do you do web applications, front end, back end, you can also do mobile applications. So... I still don't have. I still don't love JavaScript. I think the ecosystem is really good. But I'm loving TypeScript. I know Praveen doesn't like it, but that's a different okay. discussion. But TypeScript ends up being JavaScript, so it's, I'm still in that JavaScript um, world. But that is definitely one one thing to learn. And there are new features coming out all the time, which we we're discussing, going from the current ES6 to ES7. There'll be ES8 in the near future as well. And so we've and we've talked about some of the limitations of JavaScript as well with with numbers and additions, but those aren't things that I think it's really good to be aware of those things. But it's not something that we use on a you know on a day to day basis. We don't do a lot of those calculations. Uh, some more questions. No problem, Tejez. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, thank you so much for the question. I really appreciate it. I, I love getting interesting questions, and I love you know seeing people wanting to learn more. I'm still learning after 15 years of being a developer. So, you know, we, we're all still learning. We uh, are all lifelong learners because every time something is going to change. So Exactly. Happens. And uh, another question, um, which backend framework do you think is more useful? Um, and, JavaScript. Uh, and can do more stuff for hackathons, Node or Django? Uh, uh, I love JavaScript by Pooja. Thank you. <laughs> Again, I think, you know, um, Python is really good if you're in the data science world. Yes, there is Django for the web framework, uh, and it is very popular. I, I I think the two the main popular ones are probably JavaScript and, and Python from what I've seen at hackathons in London, UK, mm -hmm. or I go to some in Spain and, and Portugal and Amsterdam and so forth. But yeah, JavaScript and Python are definitely the two popular ones. So I'd pick one of those, and you can't go too too wrong. So I think that's uh, a good question. Venkatesh, Node.js, woo. Yeah, Node is 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 really good. I, I've got. I'm getting. I'm very impressed with it. I'm still always being impressed by it, um, even like I said, by living and breathing it for six years and still yeah. being more impressed by it. So it is good. And there are so many frameworks and libraries coming out. It's just, yeah, really, really impressive. So keep those questions coming in. I'm gonna let Praveen do um, the the number bit he wanted to do as well, and then we'll come back to uh, questions. Oh, Venkatesh's Golang is rising. I haven't seen it yeah, rise Go so much. Yeah, Go is really much, good, actually. But, okay, it is really good. I'm not. It's an amazing concept, an amazing language. But I haven't seen it grow so much. Like with Rust, it's really interesting their concepts. But I just I haven't seen it explode like JavaScript. It could be growing, and it probably is. So I, I, I don't think it's not growing. I, I do think it is growing. But in London, I don't I haven't seen it explode yet. So uh, it will be interesting to see where the, where that goes. Okay, Venkatesh. Right. I'll, there, are, I'll, there are other I'll, few questions. Like, uh, for yeah. example, um, yeah. So Tejas was asking about. Uh, there are a lot of Udemy courses. There are. There is also like a lot of couple of YouTube channels where you can have a look at it, and uh, they are also free in YouTube, and you can learn a lot in there. My uh, channel, jump in, subscribe to my channel. Yeah, I do some uh, lot of JavaScript and Angular and Node, and uh, we've got to convince Praveen to start a YouTube channel as well, so um, we'll give him a nudge afterwards on socials. Okay. Who wants me to start a new YouTube channel? Praveen, you can, get, like, you, uh, you can say it out. You don't need to type it. It's so funny when no, you no, type no, no. it. <laughs> I mean, if, if I get 10 people or 15 people saying yes, then I'm going to start one. <laughs> okay, everyone say yes. I'm going to write yes as well. And everyone <laughs> say yes. Let's get Praveen starting a, a YouTube channel. Uh, let's jump into some of the other questions as well. Um, uh, uh, da -da -da -da. Um, Shavam, I didn't quite understand your question. So you wanted to, your question from earlier on. Uh, which I've lost it now, but I did see it somewhere. Okay, uh, let me quickly answer uh, um, this one uh, about uh, right. Yeah. So um, regarding Vue.js and React.js, I would prefer saying like, okay, I I would be definitely partial towards React.js, but uh, I have worked with both all the three languages which are like kind of competing with each other angular react and Vue. uh as far as my personal cons um, 
uh, as far as I am concerned personally, I would prefer going with React JS because the learning curve is very small, simple, and then you can easily um, get a lot of support. Uh, it's also a library where you can just put the part of React JS inside any WordPress application or any kind of like a, even a Salesforce application. It works. It also compiles into a static HTML files into your build folder. But in case of Angular, it's completely different. It's a it's a framework, not exactly a library, and it requires uh, your Node JS and installation everything to be intact. Obviously, it provides everything out of the box. But React JS you can get it from anywhere. So. The best thing which I would say is, in terms of React JS, you you get to choose what you want. Like for example, if you want to use Fetch, you can use Fetch. If you want to use Axios for Ajax calls, you can use it. So something like that. But in case of Angular, you need to use the same HTTP library. If there is some bugs, you have to wait till it's fixed. That's my personal point of view. And with respect to Vue JS, it is kind of like a kind of like a merge or like a thing between Angular and React. Um, since I don't like Angular, I don't like Vue either. It does have some a bit of like uh, the way it gets uh, the on click and even handling. Everything has something like in the way of Angular. It's not completely mutated from Angular towards React, but it does have this React style inside Angular. That's what Vue is. So obviously, it's gonna be a bit tough, I believe, at least for me. So I guess I would stick with uh, React JS. If that answers your question. And I'm going to give my opinion on the subject because it's to give you a different view to Praveen, which is, uh, I think it's good to see two different views. Uh, I'm not mm -hmm. saying one is right or one is wrong. I'm obviously right. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, so just to reiterate, React is just a, a library. So you can include it in certain parts of your project and all the rest. So you're including the library. Whereas with Angular, which I do prefer, I'm going to be open and transparent about that, it's a framework. So you use all of it and it has all the functionality that you need if you want to protect your roots, you want root guards or um, you want to get data before the root completes or you want to uh, call a HTTP endpoint. It just all has it built in. So I think there is more to learn as you use it, but you, it's easy to pick up because there is a CLI to generate projects you can get up and running within 30 seconds. Um, but where we use other um, other libraries, like like for Re React, for example, it because you could include so many different libraries to do the HTTP requests and all those things doesn't have it built in, then I could include one library and, and Praveen could include another. So you actually got more to learn when you think about it because as you jump from project to project, there isn't a standard way of doing things. You need to learn a hundred different ways of doing things and managing the versions on bigger projects as your project grows. It's actually quite hard to, um, someone might not have updated a library, then you can't update another library. And it does, it depends on how big the project is and, and so forth. If it's a small project, then I think it's, it's okay. It doesn't really matter too much. But if it's a bigger project and you're kind of going into the enterprise world, then a framework is usually better. I can't comment on Vue because I haven't used it. I know Venkatesh uh, gave it a good shout out in the chat and I hear really good things about it, but having not used it, I, I can't say kind of where that sits in there. Some really amazing questions in the chat, so we will try and address those uh, as well. Uh, someone mentioned what's the difference between React and JS. So JavaScript is just the, the underlying language and React is written in JavaScript and it kind of gives you a lot more features and functionality but specific to the view, um, specific to yeah, just what you see in the browser. So it's the view part. It can't do the HTTP request. It can't go get the data. It can't do all that. You have to add in those as well. Whereas, um, again, going to comparing to Angular, it's a framework. It's still the front end side. It is still the front end part of your project, but it, it has its own kind of MVC kind of world in the front end. And your back end, when you do that in Node, would use something like Express to to uh, manage all the HTTP requests. Again, that will be its own type of framework. You'd have your own models there and that sits on the back end side. But you could be doing all that in JavaScript or all of it in TypeScript, but TypeScript ends up being transpiled to JavaScript. At the end of the day, it does end up being JavaScript. Hopefully that sheds some light on that. And again, we can have a dedicated stream. We can get, you know, we can prepare something, get two or three more people on to discuss that. I'd love to get someone who has view uh, opinion on, on that discussion as well. So if you want to see that, um, leave a comment after the stream and therefore I can go through the comments because the chat 
Um, I won't go through after the stream, but if you leave a comment after the stream is finished, then I can go through that and I'll make a list of um, new stream ideas and, and contact relevant people uh, who could talk about those topics and add value to those. Awesome. So let's let's crack on with the last ever thing and last ever feature in our talk. So it's going to be numeric separators. So I've got this uh, number, which is going to be a million or 10 lakhs in the Indian terms of writing. So obviously it's going to be confusing for developers to understand what is this number about, like how, how you're going to separate it. So if you try to run this thing in console, it's going to show me 10,000. That's good. Great. Nice. Awesome. But what if I use a separator like this? um or maybe like say for example thousand separator and then like i have got hundred separator so this is the indian style of writing one lakh or 10 <laughs> 10 lakh right yeah it's 10 lakh actually sorry and if i try to do a console.log again yes it is going to be showing me the right value so adding underscores here inside this doesn't make any difference here that's that's actually good and now the best part is we all deal with date time objects right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do a date dot now or like sorry um uh get time or something like that and if i try to put a console.log a it's not a function that's bad oh yeah i need to do something like new date and get time so if I try doing that, I would be getting some crazy number. This is when I started something or something like that. So I need to know exactly where exactly I need to stop this. Like for example, uh, this is gonna be the number of milliseconds and this is gonna be the number of seconds maybe. And this could be some years or something like this one. So that's gonna give me the same number as before. So uh, uh, that's, that's really helpful in this kind of a terms like uh, this is going to be the time structure. This is going to be the date structure. And uh, uh, we could get like do the separations anywhere, like literally how many ever uh, underscores you put, it doesn't matter anything. So it's going to give you the right number. That's it. So uh, it's going to show me that it's going to be 158420295881212. Or if I put this one, it's going to give me the right value anyway, irrespective of the number here, because it's going to be like it's well below the um you know cons console.log max so the here, underscore so. they're using as a separator is the underscore special or can anything be used uh underscore is special so okay. you need to use underscore only so uh people have already tried with using comma comma is like for separating two different things so that doesn't work and in in terms of like germany and other european nations they use dots but unfortunately dots will not work here either see it's about like the the demographic um agnostic so some people use commas some people use dots and they do it interchangeably which is going to be like kind of like confusing so why don't we standardize it no commas no dots let's use <laughs> underscore something like that Okay, sounds good. Yeah, definitely. If you've got numbers to read, I think one example when people use, say, 3,600 because they're trying to um, come up with that seconds in a day or something, I actually yeah. find it easier to do, I don't know, 60 times 60 times 24 times right. wh whatever, and then leave it at that because then it's just easier to understand that it's seconds, uh, minutes, you know, hours, days, or whatever it is. But there is also this one like let's say if we have like uh say uh 1500 pounds uh we can we can put it like this and then it's gonna give me like uh um console.log um the final price is gonna be like uh let's say dollar pence divided by 100 pounds oh sorry it's not dollar oh yeah yeah dollar is needed yeah fine so it's going to be 1500 pounds here which is which is really perfect right so we can easily understand where exactly we need to put the underscore and the underscore is better in terms of like using the floating point notation when we have this issue of uh, uh, so here at this point i can easily do a console.log um something like uh, uh zero two plus zero one uh this is gonna be i mean i don't even need these things right 
and this is going to give me the right answer as 3 oh okay it's not working that way <laughs> maybe i need to do it in a different way it's, it it might work only when it has been declared or something like that so const two is oh, okay two is equal to it's going to be this and this is going to be one and zero underscore one and if i try to put like uh one plus two i hope to get three um, why Praveen's doing that i want to say we're really running short on time we're going to finish in a few minutes so any last minute questions stick them in the chat if we don't get a chance to answer them i'm really sorry but put them in the comments after the stream ends and we and Praveen and me will um will reply to those comments when we can as well and uh like I said before, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe so you can watch future videos and future streams that I do with other people, do with Praveen, do with events, and uh, yes. And finally, what you like I got point 0.3 as answer. So even for that, it helps. So just run through what you've done really quick. You've got 1500 underscore zero zero. Zero zero. That's the pence value or pice value in India. So 15,000, uh, it's like one... Uh, 150,000 is the value here. So the final price is going to be 1,500 irrespective of the underscore wherever it is. The same way I could use something like this and kind of like fix. This is this is just kidding. Just funny thing. But yeah, so something like that. Nice. Awesome. That sounds good. I wasn't aware of the underscore. So that's uh, really interesting uh, to know. But hopefully no one has any major big constant numbers. But you never know. They might do. Um, they mm -hmm. might have those. I don't know if you want to address any, look at the chat. I don't know if you want to address any last questions before. Um, okay, you can stop the screen sharing. I'll just have a look at the chat and then uh, ask the questions. No problem. I, I will leave the screen sharing up. I didn't create, uh, what do you call it? You can leave the chat open, it's fine. I didn't create uh, a scene for the stream without the screen sharing. I will for next time. Ah, all right, all right. I'll just leave that. Leave the way. chat, it's fine. So uh, regarding the future of Swift UA, I would say like, uh, Hmm. Well, Swift UA is really good, but I haven't used anywhere. Uh, what about Eddie? Have you used Swift UA before? I haven't, so I can't. I can't um, give my opinion. I'm sorry. I don't actually know. Mm -hmm. I haven't got experience in that, so I can't say. All I know is JavaScript is is and Python are getting very popular, especially JavaScript, because it can be used in mobile and web, in server side and client side, and so many things. Firebase is becoming really popular because it kind of gives you Definitely. this hybrid between database, um, func cloud, fun cloud functions, and the UI, and also gives you real-time data. So you can uh, you can have like chat messages or numbers changing and all the rest, but it's all in real time without you having to implement web sockets. And That's open source is eating the world. So get involved in contributing <laughs> to open source. That's mostly what my channel is about: is open source. You know, JavaScript is open source, Node is open source, but also getting you contributing to open source, the people watching, write in the chat if you've contributed to open source before and if you want to contribute, because I'm really keen to get more people contributing to open source, not just to make open source stronger, but also to help you get the job that you want. I find my clients because of my open source work. Places like Facebook and Google that have contacted me because they see my GitHub is active and they can actually see my work over the last you know, 10 years or maybe eight years, maybe not quite 10, uh, open source on GitHub. So I highly recommend putting your side projects, whatever you're doing on GitHub, even if it's not your favorite work or your best work, to put it on there because when people look at your GitHub, they want to see that your code from three months ago is different to your code today, that it is a lot better than it was. So I'm not interested at, when I interview people, I'm not interested at looking at their, the how good their code is today. I'm looking at, is their code today better than it was two, three months ago? Just to know that person's continually learning, to continually getting involved. And having the YouTube channel has also really helped me. So uh, this is why Praveen should start a YouTube channel. It will uh, help him, you know, people swarm to him more. And as you can see, he's really good at presenting, really passionate about sharing his knowledge. So uh, I'm really keen. Oh, I noticed my camera has um, has yeah. Uh, your gone your camera. I'm not able to look at your screen. Like I, yeah. my my camera must have died. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my behind the scenes camera. So because uh, <laughs> that one will still be on. So let's have a look. This is my command center. So you don't need this to start streaming on YouTube. But um, this is what I've built up over the time. 
Uh, let me just see, there's a few more questions. I can see Praveen's on his phone. But uh, yeah, sorry for the, uh, the back camera, which is over there. I want to try and point at it. But my camera in front of me has just suddenly died. So uh, we've got some questions. Um, what have we got? So we've mentioned we've the Swift UI one. Um, have you created any apps with JS you want to share? If not, any plans? I've created kind of a project I call Dashboard Hub. Let me get a link and, and, and share it for you. So it's fully open source. It's um, I've created it with uh, Angular and uh, Firebase, and it is live. It's still kind of like in in, in alpha stage, but uh, I'll be really interested to know, you know if anyone has any, any feedback or wants to contribute and get into it. I do do my live stream sometimes contributing this project of mine. So... Uh, yeah, I, I'm quite proud of it. It probably isn't, it's not my best work. I haven't done the automated testing in Cypress very well. There is some automated tests, but as much as how awesome Firebase is with its database, its cloud functions, Cypress te or automate testing it really, really sucks. So yeah, there's a lot of work to be done on that. So you can't mock out a lot of the requests because it doesn't use JSON. It uses its own pr proprietary format and it's not clear how or why it does that. So it's really hard to mock out requests when you're doing automated testing if you want to test boundary conditions and uh, all, all the rest. So uh, yes, Praveen's last slide is up. You've got his email. You've got his socials. They're always just his name. I think Praveen Science. It's Praveen Science, socials. yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I think it's time to call it a day. There's another stream going on that Praveen and me are not going to go watch. We're not going to be oh, on no. the stream. Oh, no, yes, I need to go there. Yes, it's so it just already. started. Who was it? It was your friend of yours, right, Praveen? It was my friend, yes. So she's live streaming now. So we're going to go join uh, her live stream. It's not exactly she, but uh, it's uh, Microsoft. Okay, Microsoft the live stream. But she's in it, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I believe so. I'm not sure, it, but I, I believe so. So let's go and find out. And thank you all again for joining Bye. our live stream. I hope it was useful. I want to wave back here at this camera over here. Hope it was useful. Leave comments after the stream and what you would like to see and what, uh, you know, what you'd like to see in the future. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all soon. I will put the holding, uh, the ending slide up. So we'll keep waving. Okay.